What's going on guys? I'm here for another Let's Talk video, the last one in our series on 1 Peter. And today we're going to talk about 1 Peter chapter 5, the closing chapter in Peter's first letter. Peter's exhortation to the letters is for those older in age, but can also be for elder Christians, those whose faith is matured. Um, all of us can be used by God to shepherd and strengthen others. Age is no disqualifier. Um, and that comes from verse 1, where he says, Therefore, as a fellow elder and witness to the sufferings of the Messiah, and also a participant in the glory about to be revealed, I exhort the elders among you, shepherd God's flock among you, not overseeing out of compulsion, but freely according to God's will, not for the money, but eagerly. Um, it's important, you know, as Christians, our job is to not only share the gospel of Christ, but also bring others with us teach others how to do the same thing we're doing. Discipleship is key to the gospel. Ministry is key, and ministry is built on community, building others up, teaching them how to live as Christians, and encouraging them in their faith and their walks with Christ. Uh, moving on a little bit further, uh, in chapter, or in verse five, of chapter five, sorry. It says, likewise, you younger men, be subject to the elders, and all of you clothe yourselves with humility toward one another, because God resists the proud, but gives grace to the hum humble. And that verse um, comes from Proverbs 3.34. Um, the part about resisting the proud and, and giving grace to the humble. Uh, another part of Proverbs, you know, is the part dealing with pride where it comes before a fall and a haughty spirit before destruction. Um, so it's, he's reminding Christians, um, specifically Jewish Christians, who would have recognized that as a reference from Proverbs to stay humble um, stay, keep your focus in your mind on Christ and don't be distracted by the things of the world that could cause you to slip up. Verse 7, um, it's, a, it's a phenomenal insight into the mind and the loving nature of God where he says, uh, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God so that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him because he cares about you. So it's it's mind-blowing that we have this confidence and this assurance that we can give the things that bother us or the things that worry us. We can give them up and lay them at the feet of the creator of the universe because the creator of the universe cares about us. It, it, it doesn't make sense. Like It shouldn't make sense. Um, it shouldn't be possible that a being who transcends space and time, who created everything, down to the smallest of details cares enough about us for us to put our worries and cares on his shoulders um, and to trust that with him you know we can trust God with any situation that arises whether it's you know the big one you know with the coronavirus we can trust God to, to work through that work in that and you know keep his will going in the virus we can trust God with you know as a college student with my future plans you know I'm taking the LSAT a week from today um, I don't really know what I'm doing I'm not super confident in it honestly um, but I've been fasting and praying the last couple weeks about it and I trust the result of the LSAT and what happens because of that to God um, I, I'm putting that in God's hands and trusting him with that because I know God cares about me from this verse um, I know that God has an interest in me God has a plan and so I'm placing that worry on in his hands um, and trusting it to him you know on less of a school level you know my grandfather's in the hospital after surgery after a major heart attack um, that's worrisome I was extremely concerned when I first heard um, I'm still concerned but I trust God I'm putting it in his hands, and I know that he cares about me, he cares about my grandfather, and he cares about my family. So, you know, I can set aside the concern and the worry and know that the creator of the universe has an interest in the things that concern me. Um, so it's, it's just a, it's such a phenomenal insight. It's a super short one verse insight, but it's a phenomenal insight that separates Christianity from other religions, that our God has a vested interest in what goes on in our lives and the things that go on in our minds too. Um, it's just, ah, oh God. I mean, somebody could preach a whole sermon on that one verse, 
It's just, ah, oh, I love it. Um, moving on to the conclusion of the chapter, we have to be alert to the tricks of the devil. Um, in verse 8, he says, Be sober, be on the alert. Your adversary, the devil, is prowling around like a warring lion, looking for anyone he can devour. Um, verse 9 reminds us that we're not alone. We're not doing this by ourselves. Uh, it says, Res Resist him, firm in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are being experienced by your brothers in the world. So verse 9 basically encourages us in saying that, like, you know, you may be going through something. You may be doubting something. You may be struggling with something. You may be, you know, spiritually wrestling with something, a concept or a, a s sin or a struggle or just whatever it is, but you're not on your own. Um, you can take confidence in that, that you're not doing this by yourself. Um, and that's really encouraging to know. Um, and, you know, the, the end of the chapter... You know, once again establishes that you know Christ went through suffering as, as we are going through suffering. We can take confidence and security in that. And you know, the the last bit of the chapter kind of hits home the the idea that God is always good, um, no matter what happens, no matter what's going on. God is always good. Um, so that's really encouraging. So this video is really short because this chapter is really short, and a lot of it is just like you know the last one third of the chapter is just Peter giving greetings to whoever was receiving this letter. So this chapter is really short. Um, but it's a great chapter, you know. I really liked reading this chapter. I really liked the message that this chapter specifically sends. Um, and also the message it sends is the closing part of this book. Um, so, you know, so that was First Peter. You know, we've, we've, we're done with First Peter. Uh, starting tomorrow, we're going to be looking through 2 Peter. Um, and after that, I don't really know uh, what's coming next after 2 Peter. So I guess in the comments, you can suggest what, what you want to see. Um, what kind of, if you want me to discuss topics instead of particular passages of Bible or topics along with passages of the scripture. Um, just let me know in the comments. Let me know what you want to see. What you want to see more of, what you want to see less of. Um, or just kind of see how this thing flows and grows. So I will see you guys tomorrow in the next video.